Hello there, and welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have my first Christmas card of the season. So get comfy, and let's get crafty. I am working on, or from rather, a card sketch. I found this one on Pinterest. It's from Scrapbook Magazine, I think. And I like the tag. I like the little cluster of ornaments off to the right-hand side, and I like the sentiment at the bottom. So that's where I'm headed. Let's see what happens. I am using this Simon Says Stamp Memory Box Collaboration Stamp Set. And these two swags are actually ones I watercolored for last week's Crime and Coloring episode. I think it was last week. I am going to go ahead and fussy cut these images out. I could send them through my brother Scan and Cut, but it's on watercolor cardstock or watercolor paper. And it's a little bit thick, and sometimes the blade in my Scan and Cut just drags on that thicker paper. And also, because the stems are quite fine, I wanted to leave a little bit of a border, which you totally can with the Scan and Cut, but I decided to just fussy cut that. I am not going to make you watch me fussy cut both of those, though. So now that I have these swags from the stamp set cut out, I've also pulled out some old things. I have a Technic Tuesday stamp set. I have an old um, Sizzix embossed folder. I think this is actually a Stampin' Up one, like Starburst or something like that. I have pulled out my waffle flower, waffle flowers. There we go. Oval dice. I don't end up using those. Spoiler alert. I have an old punch that creates a fancy tag top. I have some iridescent and um, shimmery silver cardstock. I have a card base, some pattern paper, and a piece of green cardstock. So. To start with, I need to create my card base. I have this um, craft color card stock. It is four and one quarter inches wide by 11 inches long. I'm gonna score that in the middle at five and a half to create a top folding A2 size, or US A2 size card. Um, my plan originally was to make the first or the bottom layer out of that iridescent paper. That is totally not what happened. <laughs> I decided instead to use the waffle flower um, A2 layer dies to cut a piece of that pattern paper. So this pattern paper is something from my stash. It's an old, old piece of paper. I don't even know where I got it or how long I've had it. And it has that kind of craft background with some green that you can't really see very well and the red stars. So I am going to take this die down and cut out a rectangle from this um, cardstock. I am gonna save that little piece of red strip on the bottom and use that later in the card. So right now I'm just gonna tape the die down. I don't want it to shift because there is a, a planned pattern on this paper. If I cut it crooked, it would look weird. And I am kind of taking some of the stick off that tape so that it doesn't tear when I remove the cardstock and the die, or the, the die cut and the die. And I have sent this through my um, Spellbinders Platinum die cut machine. And I'm not loving how it looks on the card base. It needs a little something behind it. So I decided then to take this green card stock, and this is about four inches by five and a quarter inches, and I'm gonna send it through my die cut machine with this embossing folder. And it is gonna look fabulous. It is a little bit hard to get out of the <laughs> embossing folder because it is such a detailed design. But I did, in fact, successfully get it out without tearing the paper which I have done with that embossing folder before. So this takes up just slightly less than the card front, but the panel I've cut out now is a little bit too big. There's not enough green around it. So I'm just gonna pull my paper trimmer out and trim about an eighth of an inch off one side and an eighth of an inch off the bottom. And that will give a nice green border and you'll still be able to see that embossing on the paper. All right, so we have our first couple of paper layers down. It's time to work on that tag. I have this old tag punch. It's a Stampin' Up one, and it will cut a two inch wide piece of paper into a fancy tag. I don't remember the name of the punch. I don't know if they still sell it, but there's lots of ways to create a tag for the front of a card. So I'm gonna trim this piece of shiny paper down to two inches slide it up into that punch and look at that, I have a pretty fancy tag. 
Now, this tag, this piece of paper, was just a scrap piece from that pad, and it is obviously longer than my card front is. So I am going to mark it and trim it down. I did get smart and flip it over and mark the back of the paper so that I didn't have ink on the front because that could be bad if it didn't come off, right? All right, I'm going to pull out my Fiskars trimmer, line up that little blue pen mark. There we go, pen mark, words are hard, and trim it down with the blade. So here is the thinking part. Instead of using three objects to create that little cluster of elements on the um, right-hand side of the card sketch, I'm just going to use this one swag. But how do I get it on there? Because I also want to stamp a sentiment and place it on that tag. So I think this is how I want to do it. I want to use, originally I chose this have a Merry Christmas um, sentiment, but it's too tall. I can't stamp that and still have it readable with the swag of the flowers. So instead I'm going to use that one that says jingle all the way. Same stamp set, it's a little bit shorter and it will fit perfectly. I am going to stamp that on a piece of scrap cardstock that is the same color as my card base. And like I said, this is an older Technique Tuesdays stamp set. I don't know how long I've had it, when I bought it. But the cool thing that I like to do, I don't know if it's cool for everybody, but I like to use all of my stamps whenever I want. <laughs> I, I carefully choose the stamps that I want to purchase. At least I do now that I've been doing this for uh, some time. And I reuse them. I, I, I reuse them often. So I have gone ahead and prepared this card stack with the rabbit hole design cotton tail anti-static powder tool. And I'm going to ink up the sentiment with that Versa, um, Versa Claire Nocturne Black Ink because I want to heat emboss over the top of this. And if you have not seen where I watercolored the swags, I did the same thing there. I stamped them in the Versa Claire Nocturne Black Ink and then added a layer of clear embossing powder over the top of them. And I did that on the swags because it kind of creates borders for your watercolor. And because I'm not a fabulous watercolorist yet, it does help me have a little bit of feigned control. I went ahead and heat set that um, clear embossing powder and then trimmed down that sentiment. And now I just have to figure out how I'm gonna put this all together. But my tag seems to be missing a little something, and I'm just not quite sure what to do about that. So I decided to start assembling layers. I pushed my card base off to the side, and I'm going to use some liquid glue to adhere the pattern paper to the top of my embossed panel. When you have um, embossed paper, you do need to use a liquid glue because sometimes a dry adhesive will not allow the papers to stick together well because of the the difference in the texture of the paper, right? All right, so here I am trying to remember where exactly I had the swag on there, and I'm still not loving how blank the tag is looking. Obviously, if it's a tag, you've got to put some twine or ribbon or something on through the tag holes, because that just makes sense. Is there a name for that tag hole? Like, what would the name of that be? I don't know. <laughs> I am going to use my um, double-sided adhesive to tape down my sentiment. I, instead of using liquid glue, because if I decide I want to move it, it'll be a lot easier with that dry adhesive. Okay, so here's where I'm, I've, I've got my card panels, or my, yeah, my card panel, there we go, right word, and I've got my tag. Um, my card panels are sliding all over my glass work surface, so I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive on the back and kind of stick that down so I can arrange and play without it going everywhere. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know what to do with the hole in the tag. What, what did I ignore it, pretend it's not there, stick some twine through it. And ultimately I decided to go ahead and grab some ribbon. Now I still have in my stash a number of spools of ribbon from back in the day when ribbons on cards were like the thing to do. Um, and I have this piece of, I think this is, I don't know, 10 year old um, Michael's ribbon. <laughs> I don't know. I probably bought it for some other project specifically and it's still in my stash because 
I don't like to throw things that are pretty away. <laughs> anyway, I have put that ribbon through the top of my tag, the tag hole. I don't know what to call that, but there's got to be a proper name for that. And then trim the ends down at an angle. I don't want them to be just kind of standing up like that, though. I want them to kind of um, make a V. So I am going to pull out a mini glue dot and stick a glue dot down in there to keep them upright, but also keep them um, in, in the direction I want them to be. And I could have used Baker's twine, I suppose, but it's a little bit hard to control Baker's twine. And, and um, I'm feeling a little need to control how this looks right now. I, that's just where I am today. <laughs> I just need to control all the things. I am going to trim that um, ribbon down just a little bit more. It's a little taller than my tag, and I don't want it to hang off too far. Okay, so here's where my tag is going to go. I need to figure out, make sure that I left room for my swag of flowers. So one of the reasons I bought this stamp set is because depending on how you color it, it looks like a poinsettia, so it's a Christmas flower, but it could be any flower. It's a very versatile stamp set. I am going to adhere my tag to my card panels with some double-sided foam tape. This is from my 3M gigantic roll, you know, big as your head roll of foam tape. I just kind of sped through that because nobody likes to watch you uh, take the backing off foam tape. It's a little tedious. I don't know. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use some liquid glue to put this swag on. I'm trying to figure out where I want that leaf to go, like overlapping the W right next to the W. If I get too close, I cover up the Y. I'm, I'm having some control issues today. I'm having a hard time going with my um, creative let it flow thing. So I don't want it to hang over this card panel too terribly much. It is smaller than the card base, but if it hangs over too far, I'll have to cut it down or put it in a larger envelope. I am going to stick some foam tape down here on my card front underneath that um, leaf branch so that it doesn't get crunched um, because it is hanging off the tag that has been adhered with foam tape. And now we are going to add the other sentiment. You remember the, the card sketch had a little sentiment across the bottom? Well, I am going to take that piece of red paper from our background panel and I am going to stamp this Subsentiment from the Technique Tuesday stamp set, and this time I'm going to stamp it in clear um, VersaFine ink and white heat emboss it. So I'm going to use white embossing powder. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that into my MISTI so I can stamp it again if I don't get a very good um, stamp the first time out. Also going to prepare my paper. Well, that's a tongue twister. <laughs> with the anti-static powder tool. Um, anti-static powder tool, probably the best thing you can invest in if you are going to invest in heat embossing. It takes all of the oils and stuff from your fingers and the paper so that your embossing powder only sticks to the ink. That way you don't have extra pieces of embossed um, embossing powder melted onto your paper. It's kind of like a powder that turns into a plastic. I think that heat embossing has been like the gateway drug to many a crafters. Okay, to trim this down, I'm going to go ahead and use my Simon Says Stamp um, labels dies. I'm going to cut that off screen and just tape that down. I want to make sure that I get it clear up to that left side edge, left hand edge. There we go. <laughs> um, words are hard today. Words are really hard today. I had to hit the ground running today and my brain has not caught up. Okay, so I have trimmed out that sentiment. And what I did was I, I lined up the left-hand side with the label die, and then I lined up the right-hand side with the label die. So they both had the same kind of finished look on the end. I am putting some 3M foam tape on the part of the sentiment that will hang off of that tag, and then liquid glue on the part that will be on the tag. And I'm just kind of butting that up to where the, the foam tape hits the edge of the tag. So now I just need to finish the inside. Oh, sorry, I'm jumping ahead of myself. 
I need to adhere the card panels to the card base. And again, because this is embossed paper, I am going to use liquid glue. This is not something I do often because we all know that Jenny and liquid glue are frenemies. I like what it does for my project. I hate what it does for my fingers. <laughs> I end up with a gluey mess. And just in case you're, you know, 150 years out of elementary school like I am, you know, remember in art or in class when the teacher said one dot, not a lot? Clearly, I forgot that because I put a whole ton of glue on the back of that panel. Gratefully, Tombow Mono Glue dries clear, so if any of it had squeezed out, I would not have jacked up my entire project. Not sure why I thought I needed that much glue, but I did. Okay, now for the inside. I have this old, old Stampin' Up! But this might have been the first Christmas stamp I bought from Stampin' Up! And it's called like More Merry Messages or something like that. It's Sentiments for the Inside of Christmas Cards, which I love because then all I have to do is sign my name. I don't have to write a whole note because I send out like a hundred Christmas cards. So I don't want to think of a hundred messages to write. <laughs> Okay, I needed to remove the black foam pad from my Misty because this is a um, foam mounted stamp and I'm going to stick a piece of scrap paper into my Misty to make sure that the stamp is straight. I was looking for a piece of acetate or plastic or something, but scrap paper works too. I am going to ink it up with this VersaClair um, Nocturne Black ink because it's the same ink I used on the front and I don't want it to be... Um, now, is anybody going to notice but me? Probably not. I'm probably going to be the only one who would notice if the black inks weren't exactly the same. But yeah, again, we're having control issues today. I'm going to go ahead and stamp that. And I'm using the slightest amount of pressure because I know I can restamp it if I need to. And I was tempted because the middle was a little bit light. But that big capital M, I was afraid I would smear it because it is a bolder font than the rest of the letters. All right, I'm going to go ahead and adhere this panel to the inside of my card. This is just a piece of copy paper. It's like 24 pound copy paper. It has been trimmed down to fit on the inside of the card. So it's about four inches by five and a quarter inches. I'm just using my grid mat and my fingers to line that up because again, while I have control issues, I don't have measure all the things itis. And then it felt like the inside was just a little bit blah plain. So I took one more scrap of this pattern paper and trimmed it down to about a quarter inch. Didn't really measure. I just picked a line on my Fiskars trimmer and cut it that, that narrow. So I think it's about a quarter inch. And I'm going to line that up across the bottom of the card and trim that off with a pair of scissors. And that's it. The first Christmas card of the 2022 holiday card making season has come to an end. I like how this turned out. And again, I love this swag and the stamp set because it could be used for anything. I hope you enjoyed watching how this card came together. Stick around. There's going to be a lot more Christmas to come. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have added a couple of other videos here. I think you might like as well as a subscribe button. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, I would love it if you did. Um, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Have a really great day.